Hey, whoa, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Cuddy Slim. You're tuning in to the Cuddy Cation Kickback Show. What's happening with it? I just introduced my co cast, my homeboys, my sidekicks, my boy Rico Bobby. What's up with it, my man? How's it going, Cuddy? Glad to be here on the third episode. I'm glad you're here too, man. Yeah. Good looking out, man. We still holding this thing down. It's episode three, the move in special. Yeah, this we is an early to... kickback, too. Yeah, early yeah. kickback, man. We started up early, man. Yep. Um, Sometimes you got to get it in, man. Uh, but we started early because it's a very important show. It is. The move in special. The move in special. And then we also got my boy Jose on the mic. He's running the board, but he's not going to talk. <laughs> he's definitely not going to talk. Last time you said that, he, he ended up doing all the talking. <laughs> but no, nah, yeah, this is the move in special. My boy Rico, Bobby, and me. Uh, we came up with this name last week, and we was like, damn, the next episode is going to be the move in special. And that is because... I just moved in my new place. Today. That's right. And yes, and I had my boy Bobby right there beside me, helping me out. Jose was there. Everybody was there in spirit. <laughs> in spirit. There you go. And once yeah. we finally got that electricity on, that yeah, was, uh, man, that was, <laughs> that was that ran was, into some roadblocks trying to get that set up. That was a crash. Yeah. Had my had the electricity had it um, activated a week before. And as soon as I go move in, it's still not on. So I'm calling, I'm cursing out everybody, the energy company, the maintenance man, the office. Yeah, it was terrifying. I was going off, man. And then <laughs> I told them at 11 o'clock that electricity wasn't on. All of a sudden, they wait till 3.30 when it starts raining to try to go fix it when they can't open up the uh, breaker box. Right. <laughs> Just to have an excuse. I'm going to be exposed to water. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about they try to they, they wait till it start raining to try to put an effort in doing it. It's true. And then once they uh they realized that um uh, it was a child involved, they had to get on it. They were like, hell no, this guy right here getting mad, it's a little baby. Well, boy. that's that's a good bargaining chip, isn't it? Having a kid, yeah, like, it is. Things it become is. automatically you, double serious. You can throw that kid in. With yeah. <laughs> yeah, the kid is the best excuse to ever have. I'm talking about yeah. Yeah, man. And I can't, like people at work, I can't come to work. Uh, uh, it'd be Memorial Day. They went to Memorial Day to not end up having a babysitter. Right. Any other day you have a babysitter. Right. But not on Memorial Day you can't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, that's just an example. Yeah. You, there's no, there's you, can, not, you can have pancreatic cancer and your boss will not care. Yeah. But if you've got a kid who's oh, got yeah, a yeah, cold, yeah. Kids you're first. fine. Kids come <laughs> first, for real. Hey, I'm about to die. I can barely talk. <laughs> you got to come in anyway. Okay, damn. Well, my son's sick, too. There you okay, go. Okay, you good. <laughs> so tell me about the new place, Cuddy, because I've seen it. Yeah, the new place. But the relatives cool. need to hear about it. Yeah, what's up, relatives, by the way? Shout out to my relatives, the people that's tuning in to us, relating to us, even the ones that hate on us. It's We're true. still going to keep it going with episode three, the move in special. The move in special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the crib, I, I pretty much, uh, you know, this is not like the, the place I was staying in before. But it's my place. It's cool. I like it. It has wood floors, uh, powdered blue walls. Uh, it's in the back. It's way in the back. It's cut. It's in the cut. Yeah, you got a nice view of the creek. It's That's the good cut, stuff. Call it the cutback. The cutback. <laughs> <laughs> it's the cutty stay in the cutback. Back there. It's the oh, cutty stay back there in the cutback. But yeah, I like it, man. Uh, it's cool. It's, uh, I'm back by myself in my name, and that's the best feeling about it. You know. You know, you can do what you want to do around it, you know. And plus, it's uh, space for my kids. It's not All just right. me. It's, you know, my son needs to be somewhere we can run around and and make as much noise as he can. Yeah, and you've been there for all of like four minutes, and you've met thirty four neighbors. That's <laughs> ridiculous, Cuddy. <laughs> no, well, hold up. Two of the dudes I know they from Shreveport. I've been knowing. Uh, I've been knowing these guys. Is there any it's place so in the happy. city you can go where you won't run into your friends from Shreveport? <laughs> You know what? I know for us North Dallas. It happens Dallas, all the time. Yeah, it's for us, for us North Dallas. Well, most of us have been knowing each other out here for the longest anyway. Mm -hmm. We've been out here, but it's like some people I see that they just moved out here four or five years ago, or they be from Shreveport, but I never met them before in Shreveport. They right. just they from Shreveport, and we just click up, click up like that. Right. But just it ain't just Shreveport dudes. It's, it's people around Dallas I know. They 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 uh they can be from anywhere. You know, Dallas, Pleasant Grove, uh, Fort Worth, whatever. Mississippi and live out here. I mean, I see them in my lifetime since I've been living in Dallas. So it ain't too many places. Everywhere I go, I, I see somebody I know. I went to the Papa Do's on Oak Lawn three weeks ago. And uh, I seen about five people that I know mm -hmm. 
from around the world. Oh, and, again, I didn't even know who they were though, because I'm sitting there with him, and I'm like, the girls that I was up there with, they was like, uh, there was some women over there trying to get your attention. I'm like, I ain't know who they were until me and Ryder went to the bathroom, and we went to the bathroom. I came back, I seen the ladies, I was like, I know y'all. It was like the whole time we were trying to get your your, your attention. I'm like, well, damn, shit, you should have do something at me. <laughs> but uh, that, 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 that was kind of strange. Look, I'm way on, in Uptown, pretty much. And I see somebody I, that I know, a couple people. So, yeah, it's always it's always good to be somewhere where you, you, know, you know people and people know you. Yeah. But some, sometimes I want to be ducked off. I, don't, I don't want to see you. I know that. I know that. And that's why I have a secret bar, you know? There's, there's a place you can always go. Well, I'll tell you about the secret bar. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know about this concept, you need to be privy to it soon. Because uh, you're going to want to go. You, you know the Cheers theme song. You want to go where everyone knows your name. Sometimes you want to go where nobody knows who the hell you are. Exactly. And, and nobody can find you. And you don't tell your closest friend where this bar is. Uh -huh. You know, you, you just go hang out and you're a different person in that locale. Yeah. And I have one of those. It's in Plano. That's the hint I'll give you. But there's a million bars in Plano. You're never going to find me, folks. Yeah. You're never going to find me. You probably, but, uh, you probably go. I got a bar like that too, though. But I probably know somebody. But the people who I hang with, they don't know I'm there. Yep, exactly. You probably go to Goodfellas. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you look like somebody to go to Goodfellas. Uh, no. No, that is, nah, that's good, though, man. You got yeah. Well, you know, it's it's a place to like, you know, decompress. There's there's no reason to. Sometimes you just want to have a drink and not speak to yep. a single soul. Yep. You know, you, you want to feel like uh, that one cat to be up in the uh, one spot we'd be at. It just sits in the back and drink his beers and. He, he, I know exactly who you're talking yeah, that, about. That dude, that cat right there. That yeah. cat, he don't say shit. To he nobody. doesn't say anything to anyone, yeah. and he's been going there for like. A decade. <laughs> Straight up, he don't say shit, and that's cool though. You know, like and I, and I, and I thought I won't say shit to him. You know? Yeah, and that's one less motherfucker I gotta yeah. talk to. <laughs> that might this, that might be his secret bar. That might be yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Who knows what kind of life he's got he's beyond some, that? Uh, Agent 007. Yeah, right. He, he has to contract he's, he's kill people. He's, he's, he's checking out the spot. <laughs> Fuck wrong with you? Get out he's of his just, crib. <laughs> he's just the worst Russian spy. Yeah, yeah. He never actually spies. He just hangs. Just hangs out there. He, he, texts, he on text, he's on his text phone all he, He's texting all day. Right. He's in, I, it doesn't look like business texts. I don't know. The, yeah. the look on his face doesn't look like he's doing business stuff. I won't be surprised. He'd probably be texting the bartender behind the bar and be like, hey, go go to give me another beer. I feel like Christina would have <laughs> let us know at that point. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, uh, damn. What's up, little sloppy joke? Uh, yeah, so what else has like, been up with you, Cut? Shit, now you got my boy Ryder right here. You know, hey, chubby, Ryder. Slinky man in the background by yeah. his... You hear me? Everybody say what's up to Ryder. Ryder say hello to everybody. Ryder's waving right now. He's waving to the relatives. He doesn't understand the uh, the concept of an audio medium. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> he's very. Um, he took his. He about to take a nap in a minute. To be honest with you, he, oh, he, got, gre he got greasy hand, greasy hand. Oh yeah. Well, he's supposed yeah. to. He's a kid. So what's been going on with you though, Bobby man? You know, I know you got him been drying out. You know. Fabric, yeah, you fabric, know what? Fabric soft in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I had to dry out because um, I was out of town the other week uh, for my little brother's graduation. So congrats to young Nicholas. Congratulations for, uh, Nicholas. Yeah. Nicky to, uh, Nick. For, I met Nick. Nick cool as fuck. Yeah, he's a cool kid. Like you, dude. Yeah, no, and congratulations to him for uh, graduating. So uh, me and a bunch of the family were up in Ohio, as a matter of fact, in bumfuck Ohio. I'll say it. So it, how it was, was nowhere. Trip, though, man? That was great. You know what? The first day... Um, I didn't even see Nikki the first day because he was busy doing his senior week shit. He was like floating some goddamn river. I don't know what he was doing, but I didn't see him the first day. So we were staying in this little town about a mile away from his school called Mount Vernon. Mount now in Mount Vernon, if you're not familiar, folks, uh, it's where the Dukes of Hazard meets the Pride Parade. For some reason, all I met there, <laughs> all I met there were rednecks and super gay dudes. Like, really? uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, not, wonderful people. Oh, and meth heads. And yeah. I guess they crossed over in that Venn diagram. Yeah. But yeah. Which are pretty much red next to though, right? Yeah, exactly. Like people with no teeth. And you could tell their faces were sunken in. It was goofy. And they smoke but, uh, Western cigarettes. They do. Yeah, filterless. Red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so I, I hung out that night. And I decided, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to enjoy myself in this town. It's a goofy little place. And I like weird places That's like that. That's one thing about you, though, I will say about you that I like. Yeah. You know how to go anywhere and pop your collar off. So oh, yeah, you dude. go anywhere and make yourself at home oh, yeah. quick. Everything's fun. Whether yeah. <laughs> they there, they know your name or not. 
And I, I'm the same way. Oh, exactly. No. It, it was a lot of fun. So I ended up hanging out at this dive bar. And I love dive bars. You know that. And, you know, smoking and joking and talking to a bunch of the locals there who had never left. Yeah. Which is weird because it's a town of like 4,000, man. Yeah. You'd assume, you know, everyone has a car. You can just leave. You can leave on accident. It's not yeah. that hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, so it's that lane. You're like, damn, I need, yeah. get, I need to leave yeah. this place. But, but they made me feel yeah. at home. So yeah. thank you to Mount Vernon if you have uh, computers or earphones over there. I don't know what the technology uh, is uh, up in that spot. But drinks are cheap and people are very nice. So that was a, a wonderful time. And then Nikki's graduation went, went through without a hitch. And after okay. I came home, I just dried out a little bit. And then you didn't see me for about a week. Yeah, and that, that, that's what, that was another story. I'm like, damn, Bobby been back, but he's, uh, where Bobby at? Where Bobby at? He's just chilling, you know. Sometimes you got to dry out. Yeah. And that's like rehabilitation. Yeah. Sometimes you got to, you know, I, I love the place we hang out at, but sometimes you need a break, you know. <laughs> it can be, it, it don't necessarily have to be a pub or a... Uh, Oh, well, it could be anything that you uh, you do on a uh, repetitive basis, on a daily basis. Right. You got to step back on it. You know, it's like yeah. uh, if you if you if you out there hustling and you out there selling your shit, you can't hang out in that one spot forever. You got to switch to another yep. spot because you had just got yourself to it. So sooner or later, it's gonna be you're gonna wear out. Right. Yourself over there, and you got to move around. And it's just like when you go to a bar or. So sometimes people get. Sometimes you'll get somewhere and you'll be stuck there so long you'll be so content to it you won't leave, and that's how some people end up being stuck at the bar that never left yep. in that little town you was in. Yep. And it's just like that uh, the spot we hang yep. out in. Yep. Yeah. Yep. People they stuck there because they don't want to leave. That's exactly and right. And you, you, if you find yourself at a job too long, and it's like you you have no ceilings anymore, you can't. Right. There's hire. no upward mobility. But you get so content yeah. where you at though. You start having that bad, that bad luck and those bad vibes at work. You end up hating your job. Right. You should have just left there four or five years ago and had something else that you was doing. Because mm -hmm. new shit, everything, everything has an expiration date. No, that's absolutely right. It's like and, it's like a relationship. You know what I mean? Yeah. Two people cannot spend all of the time together. You're gonna, yeah. no matter whether you mesh perfectly, you're gonna hate each other. Yeah. Well, if you spend all the time together, that's, that's why you're gonna leave. And that's why relationships yeah. end up dying down. If yeah. You're gonna spend that much time together. Right. Make it active. Hey, Rai Rai, what you doing over there, What's little buddy? Down, Rai Rai, what are you man? fucking with, buddy? What you got? You want to play with your toys? Where your bag at? <laughs> a yeah. short break in the Cut Occasion podcast because, uh, you know, a little Rai Rai requires some attention here. Hey, buddy, we're trying to do a show. You want to come talk to mic? Hoses got you. Back to the show, Cut. Let's, yeah, back yeah. to the show. He all good. <laughs> you know, he got some toys in that bag over there. He can get that bag, that baby bag. He got, he got like all type of toys and stuff we can crash together. But yeah, man, uh, what we were saying now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Folks, this will happen every once in a Hell while. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no. We were talking about hanging out at one place too long or being around somebody uh, too long, whether it's yeah, a good friend of yours or, or a girlfriend or a whatever, you, you just need space apart. Exactly. And that brings me back to the secret bar concept, which is a healthy concept. Go somewhere where nobody can find you, where you get to decompress and be alone. Cause you need to be alone every once in a while. I want to say most of the time you want to be around people, but, but you want to be like, you want to be but like 15% of the time you want to be alone. Yeah. You, you know? want to be alone, but at the same time, you don't want to be around people that, uh, that you already know. It's good to be around people that, around people but they don't know you so you, you yeah it's time. it's hard to be alone around friends and then it's, like, it's, yeah because <laughs> yeah, the people that don't know you they ain't gonna say that much to you mm -hmm. they might say a couple words or nothing and, or nothing at all yeah. i mean but eventually if you hang out there too long you're gonna end up having conversations with the people you just you're gonna build another relationship with a whole another clique of people that's exactly right and the next thing you know you got all these people that you know that's yeah. a part of your life now you're juggling two yeah, different yeah so, <laughs> yeah that's why I just get in where I fit in, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. To be honest with you, I do want to hang out alone or something. Don't want to be bothered. I want to drink. I can do that at the house. Yep. I do, I and kick, now that you've got, I kick back. Me, I, I kick back and play that game. Yeah. Or I watch, I watch movies or documentaries. Uh, uh, I'm gonna entertain myself some kind of way. I can, I can listen to some music, man. Smoke me a blunt, and uh, have a drink in my hand. And then be cool like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always been that type What's of What's the last movie you watched? The last movie I watched. I think I just had a, I think it probably was uh, the King Kong movie. That shit went hard, man. It was I'm good? Like, that shit good. I didn't see it. You know it. what? I skipped over that movie like a thousand times yeah. on the fucking uh, 
fire stick. I don't want to watch that shit. And I and I was one of a, my boy Sean's house. Right. Sean was watching that shit, and I just I, I got stuck watching that. And I said, "Fuck that, me and Ryder, we going home to watch this." Shit. <laughs> I went home and watched that shit. You need to watch that shit. That's the best movie they made. This was it year. the Skull Island one or? Hell yeah, okay. yeah, that thing right there go hard. Sure. My, even if my little son Ryder, 19 months, if he can sit up there and be attentive to a movie. More than he, he was attended. enthralled with the and King like He's sitting there watching it. was like with his hand on his left, watching the movie like he's a little midget or something. And like he, he don't pay attention to uh, Cartoon Network like that. Not huh. any of that. So maybe it's that part of life where he started to be very attentive towards stuff that he's interested in. But uh, he actually sat there and watched the Kong movie with me. I was like, like, it was good. I'm sitting there like, yeah. He's like, he, he's mocking me. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just repeating. <laughs> he'll, he'll repeat, repeat and the guy go like this, slap my leg, he'll slap his leg. <laughs> yeah, a little chubby throws shade when he doesn't know I he's got throwing some wet shade. Wipes. He got some wet naps right there in that bag. You can wipe his hands with it. You're a damn mess, chubby. <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, that's just how kids are. You know, kids. They, by the way, go to. Uh, there you go. Got it. That's the, the cracking that's open the, a that's cold Coors uh, Light. <laughs> the signature uh, kickback. There you go. Yeah, so uh, the last movie I saw was... Uh, did you ever see Logan? Logan. I watched Logan like two, three months ago. Ah. I, I enjoyed that. That's Folks, I steal movies. I, I watch them for free. So I get them way later. I understand that this is not a topical film at this juncture. But you, it, damn it, it was really, really good. That little girl... Who was slicing out up? Of the, out of the hundred and some videos that we get <laughs> yeah. from this show, I'm pretty sure they ain't seen this shit. Yeah. It's a lot of shit they ain't seen. Oh, fair enough. I gotta stop talking X Men movies, I guess. It's, it's all, a different I like audience. that shit, though. That shit good. That was good. I, mean, I watch Logan. Yeah. I watch a lot of shit, man. I, it doesn't. I well, I, I, just, I just happened upon this site I like that'll let me watch movies for free. Uh, and it doesn't give you a bunch of, like, viruses and shit, which used to be the problem with those free sites, you know? I know I probably shouldn't be talking about this, but I know the NSA isn't listening because barely anybody is. But <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, but so I've been on like a bunch of uh, a movie kick since then. I watched Guardians of the Galaxy, the first I one. I watched that man. I haven't seen the second bad, one. Did you see the second I wa- one? I don't know if it was the first uh, one or the second one. We sitting and watched half of that. So I think it was the second one. We started okay. watching it, and uh, now that I started watching that second one, I stopped it. I remember I stopped and said. I need to watch the first one. Yeah. So I said, I'm going to watch well, the first there, one. Well, yeah, there is a huge background. To, like, I got to watch involved. the first one first. But it, it's, it's, I like it because it's a superhero movie that doesn't take itself seriously, like the first one. Because it, it's just kind of like, a, they know it's kind of like a ridiculous concept and they, they play on that. It's kind of funny. I, I watch some shit like that. I, I, I like watching movies like that. Like that one movie they came out with, Van Helsing. Van Helsing? Yeah, that, that yeah. shit like that. Uh, Hellboy. Um, Hellboy was good. That's another one they came out with back in the day. But anyway, I like shit like that, man. Lord of the Rings. I like the Pirates of the Caribbean. I can't wait to... I can get that screen right there. I stream them right there on my on my. Stick. Well, the new one's out. You got to be able to get that. I, what it is, it's like some type of... Um, something going on. It won't let me play it. Huh. But uh, I know Tupac comes out in like a week or two. Wait, I what? The what Tupac is this? Movie, the new Tupac movie. All Eyes on Me. Movie comes out next I week. I did not hear about man, this. You, that, you need to, I know. Hey, man, stop hanging out at the pub. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get, man, I'm not up to date pick, on my Tupac pick information. Your, pick your phone up every now and then and stroll down Facebook. Oh, you know, the news. you know, you your phone cut it, cut it. I could pick my phone up, but you it won't know, do any good. His phone got limo tin on it the is, screen. <laughs> 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 my motherfucking phone got limo tin. It, it's scared of squid and it got hey, eight. I can't laugh, yeah. though. My fucking my phone <laughs> screen like the fucking bubble fish tank. At least it still <laughs> works, man. I got to get me a new phone. It's like a fish tank. They got the bubbles and shit. It does look ridiculous. But... <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Sprint. Hell. You got about two more days on that thing, man. Sprint, we need new phones. Oh, yeah. Sponsor get, us, yeah, Sprint. Yeah, Sprint. Yeah. yeah. By the way, uh, Sprint, you need your phone, get it, try Sprint. Yeah. <laughs> Go Sprint there right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, my phone's fucked up, man. I need a new phone. But guess what? I had other priorities I got to take care of. As long as my shit can dial and I can know when you call me and who's calling me, then I, I'm cool. Yeah, once my Rhapsody go out there, it's a problem. I got to have that Napster. There you I go. I got to have Napster. Is that a monthly thing? You pay yeah, that monthly? Yeah, it's part of my phone bill. Yeah, okay. I've been having Napster Rhapsody since 2012. I'm a I Spotify never, guy. I, well, I got that too, though, but this right here is just the, 
this the business right here. It, get, it doesn't get any better than this. Whoa, little rye rye. Almost spilling drinks. It's cool. Uh, it's all cool. Folks, theater of the mind is a concept we use in the radio world that means um, imagine this shit. And uh, what you have to imagine right now is a young writer trying to sabotage his father's podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's, uh, he's like, he's like this, this is my show. Yeah. This is the little cut of case and chubby show. Dude, as soon as you can put together sentences, you're on the show. Just For relax, real? man. Just relax. Give you about three no. more years. But he's, he's got the little star in him. That's what he's got. He's, he knows he wants to be in front of shit, but he doesn't know why. Yeah, he wants <laughs> to be. Yeah, he doesn't, yeah, that's a good attitude to have. That is a good attitude to have. Right. He takes after his he dad. Doesn't, he doesn't know nothing about the money in, in the business part. <laughs> that's cool. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, man. Uh, movies and movies and movies. But I've been like... Like music and shit, man. I heard their new Snoop Dogg album. You know, you keep that, telling me about that, that. That's a nice album to listen to, man. I'm yeah, like, I'm gonna check it out this week, this, this and like, you and I are gonna go back and forth. It's cool, next man. It's episode like, about that uh, because it's called it's called Never Left. And when you hear that song or you hear the album, it sounds like he never left. Every, he has everybody on there. KRS One, Be Real. Has uh, Devin the Dude. Devin the Dude. Everybody I love got Devin Red the Man, dude. Met the Man, Nas. He got a couple people on there, man. It's like he said, that's an album. You know? So I heard you talking about this yesterday, and you had said that um, uh, it kind of reminded you of Snoop Dogg in like '98, yeah. like when he was really at his peak. Really at his peak, dude. Yeah. It's on that type of stuff. That's that's it's phenomenal. That right. it's, it's on that level right there. He, Snoop uh, Dogg has staying power. How old uh, do you think he's gonna get before he stops gonna, putting that album? He's gonna kind of be like one of those artists, man, that stay like like Prince and uh, Michael Jackson stayed making music today was fifty something. He's gonna do that. Yeah, but well, hopefully he doesn't end up like either of them. But, nah, yeah, that hey, weed ain't gonna do that to you. No, no, no. It, Other drugs. It's gonna be weird because we are the first. Uh, I guess group of people that are gonna witness old rappers like really yeah. old like. You know how they wheel out it's like the four cool tops to or something. It's gonna for be cool a... to see an old rapper, right? But like right now, it's really but not. but how long? And this is an interesting discussion. How long can you keep up the the performance? Because you know, if you're in a wheelchair, you're not you're not hard anymore. Like there, there's it, there is because there's an element to rap music, especially Snoop Dogg's type of rap music, which is effectively gangster rap for the most part. Yep. Uh, that that requires some sort of intimidation. You know, but but, little, but everybody had know that. Uh, It'll be reminiscent. It, it, it won't. Yeah, it'll be a nostalgia sure, thing. It, 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 I'm pretty sure, it, the, like the music he make right now, like the, the music Jay Z makes now, is nothing like Reasonable Doubt. Right, that's but, true. So you still can respect what Jay Z's coming from because it's like he's talking from a grown perspective, and he still made, he still got hits that he made when he was 40. Yeah. Jay Z got hits when he was 30, 35, 40, 25. So. Either one of those, he can record any one of those hits. You know, he can perform either one of them when he's sixty. People will still love it. Yep. I mean, that's how I look at it. I mean, yeah. I still well, respect well, it's, it. it's just going to be weird to go to a like a rap. Say, say if I if they were to do yeah, if they were to like redo the Up and Smoke tour in like uh, two thousand and thirty five. And they all have like, games. Yeah, yeah, everyone's got a walker, and they, they but, all got and, the, it, and it's going to be me. I'm sixty years old. I got a. <laughs> I got a, a fucking Jimmy shirt, Buffett t shirt on. A chronic shirt. Yeah, well, I got sandals and I got a dumb fucking drink in my hand. And, you know, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I got a straw hat on. Da 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 da. <laughs> 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 I don't know. It's, it's going to be so weird to me. Because yeah. part of that, part of that, um, part of what enthralls me about rap is definitely the, uh, I don't know, the enticing part is like the cultural aspect that it's. It's it's like a lifestyle that is presented through a level of poetry, and that's and if that's lost, I don't know how I'd be able to connect to it. You know what I mean? I mean I, the rap is like I live, die, sleep, eat, shit, rap. I mean, I love it. I'm straight yeah. hip hop. I yeah. mean, but I love all type of music. But you know, good music itself, I love it, man. And when I I love seeing old rappers still like I think this is the year right now that all the old rappers are gonna come out, come back out. Cool G rap, he dropping out. That's right. Something. You just told me that. Yeah. He just uh, dropped something uh, last week. Snoop dropped something last week. Tribe Called Quest came out with something this year. Good album. Uh, you got all these icons and the, the big dogs coming back to life. Tretch. They got a, a TV show on with all the old school rappers are coming back together. Everybody's starting to make music again. You got uh, guys that was locked up when they was young. 
and ended up getting out of they did a long bid in prison and got out what five six years ago like uh chi ali and my son you know uh myson you know uh he's been on the uh market again now he's back out there putting out music and these guys who i grew up listening to back in the 90s and they back on the scene again so i'm loving to see these older guys my age be the recognized because they that's that's it's the only way they're going to bring hip-hop back like it used to be if them old heads and them old guys still make music man because it's kind of messed up hip-hop i hate that uh people put an age on hip-hop and rap like like you were just saying uh, but it kind of uh, like uh yeah. the beatles can go the beatles or kids right. can go do a concert the beatles are timeless and people be like okay it's cool watching them so people need to trip, treat hip-hop like that we, we shouldn't die on our our legends or our old OG rappers just because That's they That's an old. interesting thought. They yeah. still make good music, man. Still buy their music, man. Don't, don't just say, oh, man, they washed out because they old. How they, Jay-Z's still entitled the best rapper at the age of 45 years old. He's like, well, how old he is. Dr. Dre, 50-some years old, still one of the best producers. Look at Puff yeah. Daddy. But, but yeah, you're talking about, you just mentioned moguls, though. These are, these are people that are above and beyond in their class. Red Man, Method Man, still buy those albums. I Scarface, love Method Man. Still go buy uh, C Bo. Still go buy Brother Lynch album. Still buy Tech Nine's album. Still buy Nas's album. Oh, Tech Nine's still tough. buy A Ball and MJG's album. A Ball and stay up. Uh, Memphis Tech. I'm talking about these MC8, uh, Yuck Mouth. Still buy these guys. E40, Too Short. Still support these guys. They still make great music. I listen to them. Believe me, I know. Mob Deep, Infamous Mob. Listen to these people, man. I know. It's a lot of young guys out there. Shout out to them that I like also that's doing good music. Quilly. I like uh, A.R. Ab. I like Dark Low. I like uh, this one cat, uh, Don Q from Brooklyn. I like Young and May. Uh, 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 Uncle Murder. Uh, I can go on and on. I look, Dave East. Most definitely Dave East. Dave East is a beast, man. I love, I can listen to all this shit. Uh, so, I mean, as far as music, man, I, I just love music, man. I don't know what the point I'm making about this shit, but, I don't the know. Point of- <laughs> but you said you said you said too short uh, in that little diatribe that you just did there, and um, that reminded me of a rumor I heard, and I don't know if you believe this or not, and I got to ask you if you do. Um, that too short was the one who uh, gave Pimp C the lean that eventually kind of like put him over. I never heard that shit, and I definitely don't believe that shit. Yeah. I don't know. Who, who, who told you that shit? I don't know. Like my cousin 10 years ago. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, man. Dad, Somebody. Pimp C been dead that long? He's been dead a while, man. Yeah, but okay, but damn. Did he, if that shit ain't in black and white, I don't even care if it's in black and white. I still don't believe it. Yeah, shit. I mean, yeah. I wasn't there. I don't know. I mean, I don't like to involve myself in cases like that. Yeah. I, I don't even want to be a judge of that. Yeah. I'm going to leave it the way they say it happened. I mean, the, the way I heard it was uh, he woke up in a hotel. Well, he didn't wake up. He fell asleep in the hotel room and he never woke up. And that's how they put it there out there. No. Who knows who's behind this? Who well, I miss Sweet Jones. Jones. <laughs> I miss Pimp I miss C. Sweet Jones, too. He yeah. talked that shit. He talked that shit. He does. Real. I love UGK. There's something about Southern rap that is just undeniably soulful. And I, yeah. I fucking love it. And I'm glad that Texas has a huge part in that. Uh, yeah. Dallas, not so much where we're at. But uh, Houston, H-Town. without a doubt. H-Town produces... Some of the best rap in the world. Zero is, to me, um, he's the southern biggie. Like, he just has that natural flow. Yep. And he's got, um, and he can sing too. Like, he just, I don't know, you can tell it just comes naturally to him. And that's something I love in an artist. Hey, little Rai Rai, you about to cry, buddy? All right, folks, All we're right. going to take a break we're gonna here. take a break, y'all. Let's take a break. Yeah. Rai Rai, he wants some more, he wants some more strawberry. All right, hey, take it a break. Take over. <laughs> hey, we back at the cutback. <laughs> We're back well, we at the, the Kickback cut. Podcast, okay. the Cutication Podcast. All right, okay, yeah, let's do it over. Watch out. Hey, everybody, we back with the Cutication Kickback Show. Sorry for the little uh, break. We had to take a little break. Ryder had a little snack on some, but we back now like we left some. And we were talking about music and hip hop and old school guys are still doing it, and we like to salute that. And uh, I think Bible was making a good point about some, and I wanted to get back to that before we took a break. And now that we are back with the second part of the show, Bobby, get back to where you was at. I can't remember. I just, you, you know what, Cuddy? I can't stop focusing on how unprofessional you're being right now. How you are that? eating. You are eating right now hey, in the middle of a professional. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fucking kickback show, man. What are you talking about? 
<laughs> and a kickback, man, you got to eat at a kickback. That's a good point. Who go to a kickback and don't have food there? That's a good point. Who you know goes what? to a kickback? Yeah. And I, mean, I know, I know. If you, if, you, if you invite some chicks to a kickback, you better have some and, food. And they don't have, you don't have any food there, man. They're gonna blow your ass out. Yep. There's no way I can have a kickback. And my homegirl says to come over there and be like, first thing she's gonna say, where's the food? Where's the food? Where's the food? Before nigga? the drinks, she's asking where's where the food, food is. Before the drinks. Wow. That way she can drink. So she <laughs> <the food. laughs> Who wants to drink on an empty stomach? Yeah. And to all the relatives, you know, our loyal listeners here. Uh, I want to reiterate what the kickback is. A kickback is a situation in which you find yourself. It's not a party, but it's a hang, you know? Yeah, out. about six, eight people max. You're hanging out. You're smoking Probably a little smoke. Years. Yeah, yeah. you're smoking a little smoke. You're listening to music. You're eating food. You're drinking a casual amount of beers. Nobody's getting crazy. But uh, dice game going on in the background. Yeah. Dominoes. It's dominoes. There you go. Oh, that's fade. Somebody's playing cards. That's right. I'm talking about... Uh, you might got a dude. It might be one of my homeboys that he might break. He might invite five chicks that he fuck with to that kickback. All five of them at the same time. Right, and hopefully four of them are team players. And they, so. and they, and they all <laughs> sit on the couch with their arms folded and their head crossed mad. What we doing here? Could be fucking with, could be fucking with a new chick. <laughs> oh man! But absolutely. No, it's a cool yeah. thing. The move-in special, folks. This is what we're addressing the here move today. Is special. Yeah, because Cuddy. Has a, a place, place, a new place. Episode three. Shout out to the Ian Gleason show, all that. Shout out to the take up, the takeover podcast show, also the homie superstar P. What it do, homeboy out there in Post City. That's right. Also, shout out to uh, all the other podcasts out there. I love all y'all. Uh, Drink champs, uh, comeback Jack show. Uh, Joe Budden, not even. I, I, I watch Joe your shit. Budden. I watch your shit every now and then. You good too? I love dude. Slaughterhouse. <laughs> yeah, my boy though, my boy, my boy Noriega though, he's doing it good. I like that. Yeah. Shout out to him, most definitely. But uh, shout out to anybody that's doing some good in life too, though. Period. I don't care what you're doing. You got a barber shop, a nail place, a restaurant. Yeah, do something you enjoy. That's why we're doing the show. Enjoy no, you're doing it and you're passionate behind it. I want you on the show to talk about it and let people know what you're talking yeah. about. What, 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 how can they get in touch with you? And uh, that way. Uh, you can get some business going. I mean, that's what we, that's what I'm doing this for, you know. People always yell out, uh, we got to look out for each other and support each other. But when you see one of your people doing something, support them. I mean, look out for them. That means I mean, subscribe, folks. Subscribe the page. You know, I'm going to tell you subscribe. that easy. Bobby, how did you subscribe the page again, Bobby? It's, it's one click away, folks, on YouTube at Cuttacation, C-U-T-T-A-Cation. <laughs> C-U-T-T-A-C-A-T-I-O-N. Um, on YouTube, please subscribe. All it is is a click, folks. It doesn't cost you any money. I mean, I do click subscribe, yeah. and when yeah. you click subscribe, a bell gonna pop up. That's right. Hit that bell. Hit every the time the bell. Every time show is uh, loaded up, you get the first. You, know, you get the uh, the preview. Yeah, and we're talking that shit. Is it's it like work? going to the movies on the the, the, uh, the day before you come out? That's exactly right. You and, get it. And uh, you know, I I just remember the point I was talking about before we took a break here. Uh, we were talking about how long or how old can a gangster rapper be before it is no longer an authentic show? Like it, when you go to a concert, at, at what point is it going to be depressing? Is that because you know the, uh, Dre and Snoop are approaching or have surpassed fifty years old, right? Some some along those lines. Well, Snoop Dogg is like forty three. Is he really? Yeah, you got not, you got the under forty five guys. You got like like I I, I always look at my age. The age I am, and um, I see, um, I can tell how old a rapper is because I'm like I'm I'm, I'm almost forty, you know, and I yeah. know some of the guys are like five years older than me. Or yeah, like Rock has got to be fifty. He's got Rock Him is, is like fifty, fifty two, yeah. but you got the guys like um, the guys like forty seven and under, like Scarface, Nas, Jay Z, um, uh, Cool G Rap. You got uh, Q Tip, uh, you got Noriega, MCA, MCA probably about forty nine, fifty. Who knows? MCA, yeah. Uh, Cebo probably around forty seven. But I mean, they still make good, good, great music. To me, they do anyway. And most of the rappers I listen to, they probably uh, thirty five or older. Yeah. Probably thirty or older. I mean, it's, 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 it doesn't have an age to it. But the, when I listen to a rapper, I listen to a grown conversation. 
and that what makes me like a rapper when he talking some grown shit. Right. When he talking that kitty shit, man, I can't listen to no kitty ass rap, man. And what you know? what would you describe as kitty ass uh, shit? Kitty rap can be any kind of the, the new mumble rap, the dance kind of stuff, you know, uh, that uh, even the bad and bougie shit. Yeah. I, I like it. I like the song, but it's uh, it's 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 kind of kitty though, and I feel like any anything that attracts. A female and the female is like, oh, I like that song. Let me yeah, like song. young college girls. It, it, yeah, you know, even old. I mean, old people, yeah. older women, because they don't want to listen to the rap. No, they want to uh, dance. That That's what they want to like do. A message behind or got some sense to it. Right, because they don't want to listen to the words. They they want to dance. Because yeah. they probably they probably this because most of the time you know it, it's too real for them for them to uh some of the words that be said anyway they probably don't even know the meaning of them so it's right. like. They don't like it because they just want to dance. If you don't have a catchy hook or something like that, they don't want to listen to it. So I, it's hard for me to listen to the um, the kitty rap because I'm not at, at that kid's stage. So that's the kids I might as well watch Barney. And the I right. love you, you love me, Era. we are happy <laughs> I mean, but I like to listen to something that got some substance to it, something that I can relate to. I want to be a relative to the song I'm listening to. I want to hear the shit, and I want to be able to be like, okay, I've been through that, or I know somebody been through that. I don't want to do fucking, I don't want to just lamb, jam a song that's going to die out once the, the, the quarter is over with. When the next dance song come out, that song it doesn't exist. Yeah, but anymore. do you know who does is the kids. Like, people from, uh, you know, 17 to 25 love that shit. They love the one-off. But they love it to the next song. Right. They and, love it to the next song but, comes out. But they don't just ca- like it. Yeah, but they don't care about that. Because, they, well, because they're, you know, they're out there, they're partying. It, uh, music um, in in the millennial aspect is, is more kind money, of like, more problems with the club well, it's, song, it's, right? Right, but it, but, but it's kind of like, like this shit. It's kind of like an accessory, right? Like uh, it's something you do in the same way that I would pair a cigarette with a beer. Like it's just something you do on top of some other stuff. They're not actually focusing on the music. And when I go to a show, when I listen to music, I'm listening. Uh, just because you and I both have that predilection just for yep. loving fucking music. This is what it is. Uh, but these kids use it as, it's, you know, it's a fashion statement almost. So I don't think they give a shit about the artist. They don't. They just like, and, and most of them like, oh, he got a lot of money. I'm buying his album. Right. I'm listening to his music. Right. Or he just, got a fly car. He got a fly girl with him. So I'm listening yeah, to his music. It didn't work out for Bow Wow. Uh, <laughs> 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 What's up, Bow Wow, man? Shad Mouse. He hit, not about, he's Shad Mouse now. Mm-hmm. Mouse, Mouse, is, is it Mouse? Chad Mouse? I have no idea. That's I haven't real heard name. from him in years. No, nah, nah, he's still. I've been hearing from. Like, he's, oh, he's, I'm sure. I'm sure he's, he's, he's a trending yeah. topic. I mean, he's a uh, trending topic. Yeah, but not for but, the right reasons. Yeah, but you know what? He got a lot of right shit going on in his life. But he's still doing movies and shit. He got a, a paycheck coming. Oh yeah, no, so, he's man, making it work. Absolutely, you, you, God bless him. Think about it though. When you got money and you famous, people either gonna glorify the shit you do. Or laugh at you making yourself a fool out of yourself. At the end of the day, as long as you're making money, it doesn't matter to you. But guess what? The, the fact that you make so much money, it matters to people who broke motherfuckers. Broke motherfuckers with shit on a rich motherfucker for looking stupid any day. Yeah. And that's why they get all their attention. In the same way, if, I swear to God, your friends I, don't want to see you come up. I swear to God, way. if I was pulled over, if I, if I was found asleep in front of my car, passed out from being drunk, that shit would have been on ESPN or CNN. TMZ like, like, or some shit. Like, like yeah, Tiger right. Woods or some shit. They made a big deal out of it because it was Tiger Woods. Okay, let, let's money. talk about that. Because that's a that, that reminds me of when I was thinking about that whole situation. Um, yeah, we we why the away. fuck are they giving him so much shit about a DUI? How many goddamn people get DUIs? Just because he's Tiger Woods, we got to watch his video? Like, fuck that. Why is that public knowledge? Why to make is that a bad, thing? Make him look bad. That's ridiculous. Who gives a shit? Both of the things that he did, I don't care about. He fucked around on his wife. Oh, you mean this super rich guy, uh, you know, in this elite profession, uh, at the top of the tops she was fucking around? Day, yeah, me. no shit. And you mean he also, you know, had a little too much fun and drove one night? Who gives a shit? I don't know why it's such a huge deal. That's not breaking news. And the same people that we be reporting it and laughing at it. They're going home and they're doing the they, same they goddamn doing the thing. same damn like, thing. That is exactly right, Kurt. The same damn thing. Yeah. Yeah. Doing the same. The, the, hey, chicks get cheated on every day, B. Yeah. Okay, this, this guy right and here. And not by Tiger Woods. He if you get cheated on by Tiger Woods, just 
Thank God you've slept with Tiger Woods. He's a champion. <laughs> He's yeah. got a green jacket, don't go, motherfucker. Don't, go, don't, go, yeah. don't get him <laughs> in got trouble. To wear it. You want to sleep with him? Yeah. Do you want to sleep with him again? And again and again and again and again? Be quiet. Yes. Don't Shut say your nothing. fucking mouth. You don't tweet him, this. Instead of getting five million, sleep with him ten times and get like ninety million. <laughs> That's about, I, without even telling nobody, he's gonna, he gonna spend ninety million uh. on you. So just take it that way. Cuddy, Cuddy was the prosecuting attorney in the Kobe Bryant rape case. Um, yes, I was. <laughs> Cuddication. Let this man be free. That is not he what a prosecutor does. Mo- he spent but, all that money. So let him be free. Uh, but, yeah. Um, anyway. But, yeah. That, that yeah. Tiger Woods bullshit. I, I don't know why people focus on that stuff. Do you think it's because people don't want to focus on how scary the world actually is? Do you who, think that who is? Was it, who was it before him? Uh, they got in trouble. I'm trying to think. Rai Rai, do you know? <laughs> I don't you know. know that he's being indecisive as a motherfucker right now. No. He just asked for the cheese. He ate that shit. He turned down the water thirty thousand times. No. Well, one of our cowboys got a DUI pretty recently. Uh, I can't remember who it is. But he's. I believe he's oh, a yeah. defensive player, but uh, you're a goddamn 49ers fan, so I can't even talk about that with you. What about the 49ers? What did you say? What did fuck you say? What did you say? the 49ers. Fuck the Cowboys, oh, How man. dare you? Man, fuck the Cowboys, oh, man. This is the last Cutication show, yeah. folks. <laughs> what do you want, man? Hey. Right, right. You're dominating the show here, buddy. We only yes, have a few minutes is. left. A few minutes, man. You just chill for yeah, like nine man. Nine hours. It'll be gravy. <laughs> So I was fucked up last night. You know what I was trying to do? I was trying to get. Uh, I told you. I was trying to get. I was trying to get Tinder on my iPad. Can't find it. What's that now? <laughs> I was trying to get Tinder on my iPad last night because I was all oh, fucked up. Oh, you trying up. to go on Tinder and shit? I was man. trying to do that. Why are you? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get you're it on my iPad. Shot. I couldn't find it on my you're, iPad. You're my phone's shot, broken. Man. I don't know if that's a great opening line. Hi, I don't have a phone, but you can hit me up on Facebook. <laughs> hit my inbox up. My phone DM is me. fried. <laughs> yeah. All right, Cut. You want to wrap this up? Yeah, man. We're going to wrap it up today, though, man. There's a couple things that we missed out on, but we'll catch up with it the next time. It was just a move-in special. It's just letting you know how a move-in yeah. can be. Congratulations again on getting you know, in your place. You know, we, 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 I'm not situated quite yet. Mm-mm. You know, and Ryder still, you know, running around. No, no, this is the moving special. We'll do the housewarming special. Yeah, later. I got to get yeah. my, I got to get Ryder's toys and shit up. You know, moved in over here. That way, he can have some uh, distractions because he wants to be co-host right now. Yeah. Matter of fact, he wants to be the lead host. No, yeah. but this is uh, your boy Cuddy Slim, man. You know, the Cutter Catch and Kickback Show. You know, the move in special, and uh, I like to thank my boy Rico Bobby. Yeah, always a pleasure to be here. Buddy. My sidekick for tuning in and being, yeah. a, you know, rolling that mic with me today, Rich Rolling, Rich Rolling. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And I also like to give a shout out to my boy Jose on the mic for running the board for me. He didn't talk that much. Jose on the board today. Jose yeah. on the board. He working the board, you know, for the Ian Gleason show. Shout out to Takeover Podcast once again. Shout out to Ian Gleason show. And those that listen to the Ian Gleason show, you know we're doing a trip to Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Some day this year in Fargo, North Dakota. But Ian Gleason will let you know that part. But right now, this is the Cutication Kickback Show signing out your boy Cutty Slim. Righteous. Righteous.